for the perspective of um, the Department of Children and Families, I think that the Family Resource Centers serve as a, a, a real uh, cornerstone in the community. In this video, I think you'll see the, the number of creative ways that the Family Resource Centers uh, go about doing their work and um, how it impacts the families. Hey there, Bree Rousseau here with the North Adams FRC. Just wanting to remind folks that our doors never closed. We're still here, we're still here for you. And it's our mission right now to just make sure we're meeting all of our parents and our grandparents and our families, you know, where you guys are at and just meeting what needs you have so we can serve you as best as we can. Since the pandemic started, we uh, have been able to work with the city officials supporting the families. Uh, we have a food pantry here and we, our food pantry is open every day. Altogether, we support about a thousand families. When the families come, they get a full bag of groceries. The bag have meat, milk, cereal, and all full of goodies for the kids. During that one minute that we spend with the family, they're able to ask information about all their resources, and we have all the information that they need. UMass team uh, to support the FRC network, we recognized that they were gonna be super busy with school shutting down and a lot of families being in a position of needing some support. So we did everything that we could do. We built up a resource webpage for the FRC network that they can point their families to, they can utilize themselves. And then we also worked really hard to secure PPE for all of the sites. So we've got 27 sites across the state and we were able to get them adult masks, children's masks and gloves and hand sanitizer, which they were desperately in need of. I wanted to talk about the idea of standing in the gap. And if you imagine a wall and on one side is the enemy, on the other side is safety. Um, and imagine uh, that part of the wall has crumbled. And what we at the FRC do is we stand in the gap and we work with our families and uh, guide them or assist them until they can get to safety. During this COVID time, we'll try to help families in any way that we can. We partner up with the, um, our local United Way and they helped us put together a drive, um, donation drive for our families. So we promoted it via Facebook and we got providers, local um, families also to donate. When the COVID-19 crisis hit, we were inundated with helping families just meet their basic human needs. Suddenly, uh, schools were shut down, people were told to stay home, families did not have the supplies they needed, nor did they have the benefits to, to get those supplies. Um, we did a lot of shopping for families, we would deliver food um, and items to their homes, um, and when, for things like diapers, that, diapers, food, gift cards, um, formula, toilet paper, and paper towels, what you, we all know was so, sorely needed. So we did a lot of that. The Nantucket FRC serves a very unique community here on our small little island, isolated out in the ocean. We have access to very limited resources and we find that um, our community was mostly in need of assistance with um, essential and through our unique uh, partnership with organizations on the Cape, we were able to get diapers and formula shipped over on pallets so that we would have those available to hand out to our families. Uh, we've been working uh, diligently to make sure that um, all families, whether they're on you know, of Nantucket family or a Cape family, that they are supported through all of this. And, and that's a message that we recognize how challenging these times are. And so we want to make sure that we're getting their needs met. We continue to work with our juvenile courts around families and youth involved with CRA process in diversion to offer ongoing supports and services. The Mental Health Advocacy Program for Kids is collaborates with Family Resource Centers in seven counties. Our staff attorneys ensure that vulnerable kids and families access mental health services 
and divert kids from the juvenile justice system. Oh, I'm Jason Godfrey, Great Barrington FRC. We've been connected with community members. We're a new opening FRC. We've been Zooming with all local providers and we're excited to be opening as are they to have us starting mid-July, early August. We provide playgroups virtually to help parents and kids learn and grow during this time. We have found these playgroups have provided parents with a level of support that they feel comfortable coming to us, asking us for some additional resources. We can connect them to some other groups like parenting education or one-on-one -on -one family support virtually, as well as connecting them to other groups and resources in the community. We've created social emotional learning kits that we've delivered to 30 of our families a week. Um, in those kits, we decided to follow the Choose Love curriculum, which the Fall River Public School System adopted from Jesse Lewis. She had lost her son from the Sandy Hook Elementary incident. Some of the things that we've been doing in Boston is providing um, virtual groups for seven to nine year olds and 10 to 13 year olds. And the feedback that we've gotten from both the kiddos and the, and the parents is that they just, the kiddos just want this, these groups to continue um, through the summer and then beyond. Um, we are running groups for um, a parenting journey group for teen parents um, at St. Mary's, um, as well as a bunch of other um, adult support groups and online. And it's just an opportunity to create a different kind of community um, and, and allow people to feel connected in a very different kind of way. Uh, one of the things we continued to do and was not interrupted was the we continued to do remote parent education classes, nurturing fathers, parenting wisely, parent cafes, uh, where school liaison along with the clinician partner to create a series of YouTubes and youth groups that focus obviously on the interests of the youth, but also to have conversations about concerns regarding COVID-19. Um, and fears that sometimes young people have and we just they don't have a platform to express it so we've been doing a lot of helping and assisting parents to navigate the world of chromebooks and helping families who english is not their first language in understanding the curriculum specified on the chromebook which you know can be a little difficult so we're trying to help families to understand and just language the instructions better during the pan epidemic, the New Bedford Family Resource and Development Center has literally been a lifeline to parents of our community. We are calling parents weekly to do emotional check-ins where parents have an opportunity to, to vent and get support around parenting their children in this very difficult time. Hi, we're the Plymouth FRC. And we are planning to open for the first time on June 15th. So we, um, before our doors even open, we wanted to be available to the community. Um, one of the things that we are gonna provide is we're gonna provide an online um, group for people that are experiencing the stress and disruption um, in their lives of uh, the epidemic. Uh, in regards to the COVID group that we're starting next week, uh, we got a lot of feedback from the community and from the school that a lot of the school nurses are currently triaging um, the COVID concerns for families and they, you know, they end their school year in a couple of weeks and families aren't going to have that support. So the school is really excited about the, the COVID group in particular because they can um, refer families so they can have that continued support throughout the summer resource workers we try to work with them to make sure they had their laptops they were getting lunches from the the school sites it was too much for them to deal with and without each other us and the families communicating it was really hard um, at first those were really hard challenges but once they figured it out and they knew that we were there to support them I think that that's how we made it through Our COVID response work has been in collaboration with the Worcester Together group. 
As part of that work, we have been able to create a hot meal delivery program for families sick or under quarantine, a broader grocery delivery program for families that may be unable to go out and do shopping right now or access their local food pantry. We've also been able to work with other community partners to create two pop-up shelters for families that may be facing delays in accessing the state shelter system while that team is working remotely. So they have a safe place to go tonight while they perhaps wait till the next business day to sort that process out. Well, at the Pittsfield FRC, one of the things that we've established during COVID is what we're calling the warm line. And what, what that is, is basically a phone number that will, is given out and families can call that line and get somebody directly. Another thing that's worked well is that in, in Pittsfield specifically, the um, elementary schools all receive free breakfast and lunch. Um, it's an automatic, kids don't even apply because of the poverty level in Pittsfield, it's just automatically given out. So what we did was we sent folks from the FRC to the different meal sites, and that worked really well to get out in the community and remind people that we were still here to just kind of connect and, and really make sure that both the providers realized that we were still here helping people and that the families still. So one of the things in the beginning, um, as everyone was switching to virtual, um, we were looking at all the different Zoom links and things we could send out. And we, we quickly realized, uh, many of us as, as parents, that um, it was overwhelming the amount of virtual resources we were, we were getting. And so we sat down as a team and we thought about how do we make this um, not overwhelming for parents. So one of the ideas we had was to put together craft kits for, for families and or different care packages and we would deliver them to families um, socially distant and um, just talk with them, have a conversation with them in person about what they're experiencing um, and then encourage them to come back um, and be part of a Zoom link if they were comfortable with that. We partnered with Lynn Public Schools to offer virtual tutoring to to students in grades K through 12 and we've been able to continue that throughout the summer to help kids transition when it's time to return to school in the fall. We also have been running a successful LGBTQ plus youth support group on a virtual platform. I am the director of the Massachusetts Commission on Grandparents Raising Grandchildren and part of the community and family engagement team at DCF. On behalf of grandparents and relative caregivers, especially during this pandemic, then I would just like to say thank you to all the family resource centers. Um, and it, the fact that the family resource centers are throughout the state is especially helpful in times like this. Been able to support them, you know, with grocery cards, paying their utility bills, um, uh, gas cards, uh, scheduling uh, cab rides if they need it, especially since a lot of them lost uh, their support system, their recovery coach, or any of that interaction that required that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so we were able to maintain connection with them and just follow up with what they needed. Sometimes just to hear them out, listen to them. That's been uh, one of the a better uh, intervention and support that I'm really kind of proud of. That one takes a lot of uh, uh, genuine connect connectivity. Uh, it really brings in together that mission and that commitment to social justice to really, you know, put yourself out there and and us also dealing with this pandemic and working remotely and, and some of the, the social issues happening right now and being able to kind of put that aside to hear somebody speak and, and listen to them and try to provide a support uh, that takes a lot you know right now um you know at this point the community and i think everyone um really needs to focus on you know we need to heal um, we need to come together and heal our community um so that is our our main focus right now and we would worked on a project called 100 reasons to smile um, which was all about showing that even though we, there are these difficult times there, there are still reasons to be positive, reasons to smile. So we, um, you know, asked our, our parents, community partners to take a picture and submit it to us with their reason. Um, and it was a, a very powerful and inspiring message of hope, which 
we just need to keep that alive. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the FRC programs and to the Community Connections programs. Your work has been exemplary in supporting family. Your professionalism and dedication is second to none. When we enter in these times of up and downs of COVID-19 world, we never thought that we were going to be in this for a period of time. However, right from the start, all of you roll up your sleeves, jumped in, and were able to provide the service for families who otherwise would find themselves in need of those resources. Families are very appreciative because otherwise they would be isolated with no way of getting the service that they need. So I wanted to make sure that each one of you, each staff, doesn't matter if it's a volunteer staff or if it's a paid staff, that you are so appreciated in the work that you do. Uh, my team, uh, the commissioner, and all senior staff within the department, uh, all the way up to the governor's office, value the work that you do. So thank you for your professionalism and the willingness to be able to provide the resource and support that families need. Mm -hmm.